Well, we dashed here especially because we heard coal-fired power stations are shutting down everywhere and we wanted to film just one or two before they're totally gone. But when we get here, we find out that the deadline for these is 2038. What's that, 14 years away? Wow, we needn't have dashed. Well, greetings, Titans. I'm Dave, this is Dave Takes It On. And obviously today we're looking into coal-fired power stations, or should I correctly say, the total lack of coal-fired power stations. Well, the headline news today is that Ratcliffe Power Station, which up until two days ago was the last operating coal-fired power station producing electricity in the whole of the UK, that one shut down at the end of September, just a few days ago. Well, Ratcliffe is in Nottinghamshire, the heart of the coal industry, and way back to the miners' strikes and everything, massive centre for coal. And Ratcliffe was the last remaining one. These power stations, there's loads of them over the years. We've got a heritage of over 130 years of burning coal in power stations. And as a kid, uh, I'm older than many people think, as a kid, we had coal-fired uh, coal fires uh, in the lounge before we had central heating. I remember as a kid central heating being installed. Up until then it was coal fires and I remember I used to come down in the morning we had a gas poker and we used to lay the fire up first one down put the gas poker in, light it, uh, fire would be going in about five or ten minutes, would take another ten or twenty minutes for the room to warm up but then we would only warm up the room that we were in so we had a morning room and that was uh, alongside the kitchen. Uh, and that room we used in the mornings, obviously. So when we came down, we'd light a fire in the morning room and that would burn for an hour or so in the morning just to warm us up and get the bit of heat in the room, uh, get the breakfast on and everything. And then that would go out and the house was cold for the day. And then in the afternoon or evening, we'd go into the lounge and we'd light the lounge fire uh, with the gas poker and coal again. Uh, and this is the way we lived. The idea of central heating with every room being heated simultaneously absolutely ludicrous. But these were the backbone of our electricity generating station. So all of you EV critics out there, all of you EV haters, yeah, we used to do this. But there again, you used to use the electricity in your house from these. What's the difference? So these have been working out of fashion for quite a long time now. Uh, they've reached the end of their natural life. Oh, Bit like ice cars, isn't it? Anyway, uh, they've reached the end of their natural life and so they become inefficient. Coal is expensive to get out of the ground. Burning anything, that's petrol, diesel or coal, is not an efficient way of producing power uh, for anything, whether that's a car or electricity. So these just reached the end of their natural life and we gradually transitioned over from the 60s onwards with North Sea gas and we transitioned into gas turbine power stations, very much more efficient. Now they too are also going out of fashion. The amount of electricity being generated today from gas-fired power stations, uh, we did a check just a moment ago, uh, we're looking just over 20% of the total electricity for the UK as of now, and we got the sunshine out. We got quite a windy day as well, so the solar and the wind will be roaring away today. Um, we're using a lot less gas. So no more coal, they finished. Gas is actually on the decline. So that will be fading away. We are getting an awful lot of power now from the interconnectors. Uh, we are exporting power ourselves. Uh, we're producing more than we need. And some of that power today is actually going over to Ireland. Uh, we're also importing some from Norway, some from Belgium, some from France, and some from the Netherlands. France, I would assume, will be the nuclear-powered, and nuclear, I'm assuming, is going to be more renewable energy than anything else. Massive hydroelectric in, uh, in Norway, um, that's their main source. 
So these are going. So we've just been in there. We've had a chat with uh, the guy in charge and he says that there's been a, a program. It dates back to about 2020, about four or five years ago uh, when this was actually just shut down, uh, decommissioned, but there was no demolition at that time. It was just shut down. And they've been slowly demolishing the site ever since over the last four years. Uh, you can see there are four cooling towers there at the moment. There were another four or on the other side of the big smokestack um, and those uh, have already been demolished and all that's left of them is about a 10 foot pile of, ru a pile of rubble. Uh, just to explain to people who don't understand what's going on, those over there do not produce smoke. Uh, when they're operating, the power station burns coal. That smoke goes up the chimney. That's a big chimney, a single chimney. And out of the top of that comes the smoke, carbon dioxide, all the pollutants and everything. They produce steam in the, um, in the plant and that steam drives turbines and those turbines produce electricity. And then the steam goes out through the cooling towers and the water condenses out so they don't lose it uh, lose all of it, that uh, condenses out and recycles back through the plant. So what was coming out of those on a really busy day when they're generating a lot of electricity was pure steam, as uh, there's just nothing else in it. Uh, so those are redundant now, as is the main chimney stack. Uh, so the whole thing is shutting down. It's interesting to see our heritage. As a child, uh, probably when I was six, seven or eight, I used to come here. I'm not sure the exact spot we came to, but we used to sit and have a picnic here watching this and picking blackberries from the hedges. And I'm thinking now, yeah, thank you parents. You brought me to a polluting site, uh, which is quite impressive, but it's polluting. Breathe, the air that I breathe everything else. And we picked blackberries, which um, yeah, okay, what we know now compared to what we used to know. It's, it's an interesting story anyhow, but this was really a big landmark. And when I started flying, this was 1971, uh, we're flying over in, um, in uh, Yorkshire uh, from Tadcaster, uh, RAF Church Fenton. And when we were flying, uh, one of the biggest sites around uh, was Ferry Bridge Power Station. Massive power station, steam coming out of the cooling tower, smoke coming out the chimney. You could see that from miles away. And when we had the M62 going across, the M1 going up and Ferry Bridge, uh, if it was a clear day, you could see from miles away exactly where you were. Great landmarks. Uh, and they're all going. So down in Nottingham, Nottinghamshire now, uh, the last of the coal-fired power stations at Radcliffe has now just closed down. It's finished. It will be there for a long time yet. It's not that quick and easy to uh, take down something on this scale. It's absolutely massive. You look at it on Google Earth. Uh, it's a big site. It's a really big area. Uh, so this is going to take some time, but I was asking about the piles of rubble and they didn't seem an awful lot for four uh, cooling towers to be taken down. And in actual fact, the rubble is actually high-grade concrete and apparently uh, all the road builders want it. So they have been coming in on a continuous basis. Uh, so when the other four cooling towers were demolished, blown up, um, there's a mass of concrete and they just take that away, they grind it up, they mix it with whatever, which will be tarmac and uh, something else, and then they lay new roads with this. So even the coal-fired power stations with a terrible legacy of pollution uh, have a useful recycling purpose for the future. And it means we don't have to dig new quarries or anything, we can recycle. So that's about it for now. Uh, we're heading off to uh, other locations, but uh, this is just, well, for me, this is a memory trip. This is a nostalgic trip because it was, well, let's just say well over 50 years ago when I was last here having a picnic and picking blackberries with my brother and my sister. Uh, we're all still going strong. My brother's over in America, my sister's down in uh, on the Wirral. Um, and uh, I'll be sending them copies of this video so they can see as well, because they'll remember exactly the same picnics as I do. So that's it for now. We're going to head off and uh, go to find a couple of other locations for today. And that will be our day finished. Sun's come out, absolutely beautiful now. It's October the 
third, I think it is, uh, second or third, <coughs> And we are um, in, uh, where are we? We're just outside Warrington, a place called Fiddler's Ferry, and that's Cheshire. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you have enjoyed this, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And if you would like to support the channel so we can do more of this getting out and filming, uh, have a look at our Patreon membership where there are lots of benefits for joining. Thanks very much, I'm Dave.